Today, we go on a hunt to find the scariest mods the community of Fallout 4 has put together over the years, and I'm not great with scary games, so this one was a bit tough for me. Oh my god! I had to overcome my fears to find these mods, but eventually I gathered a few to show here today. From a Lovecraftian psychological horror experience to a literal real life cannibal being implemented into the Commonwealth, it would be an understatement to say that what I ended up finding surprised me. I'm not going to embarrass myself attempting to pronounce this mod. It's going to send you spiraling down a huge mine filled with custom enemies, weapons and game mechanics, along with composed ambient music and sound design. I don't want to spoil much of anything about this mod because it is truly one of a kind and it's best played with no knowledge about it. But what I do want to say is how well put together everything is within the mod. One of the hardest things to overcome with Fallout horror mods is that the player is carrying so many guns and tools to kill that being scared is a hard feeling to achieve when you are one vat's headshot away from safety. Say hello to my little friend! This mod, however, does a great job overcoming that issue by pacing the dungeon in a way that slows you right down and makes you take in the atmosphere, and that atmosphere is top notch, with clever use of lighting and enemy placement. The mod is also very lore friendly for people that care about that, and it fits right into your playthrough. At level 10, you simply sleep and the quest will begin. It's got a lot of great loot as well, so this could be the mod to start your scary playthrough of Fallout 4. And that's the perfect segue into Grim, a full, comprehensive horror overhaul. There there is not a single thing this mod doesn't do to turn your playthrough into that of a scary game. To name a few things, it has many features such as a dynamic interior relighting system, more than 5 hours of original music and sound design, a bunch of new creatures and enemies, and lastly, besides new armor, weapons and cosmetics, there are many gameplay mechanics and quests to explore. This single mod could make up a whole video on its own, it's that massive. The atmosphere it creates perfectly captures a sense of uneasiness and dread you'd come to expect from a horror game experience. And best of all, it's almost entirely modular. You can favourite Grimm's menu in your Pip-Boy and bring it up to customise the mod's features. It lets you turn off any of its sound overhauls, adjust the post-processing effects of your camera, as well as built-in LUTs to change the feel of the visuals. Some specially made with games or movies in mind, like the Resident Evil preset. The Pip-Boy module gives you a torchlight which is kind of essential due to how dark this mod gets at night or inside buildings. You can also manually activate the curse which opens the gate to many of the mod's creatures to hunt you down and make sure that you don't survive the night. Testing out this setting at night in Sanctuary was terrifying despite being surrounded by settlers and defences. My turrets all of a sudden triggered and after investigating all I saw was this hulking figure in the distance making their way towards me. The quality of the mod surprised me that much that I'm already planning on doing a playthrough of this one installed. If however a complete overhaul isn't your cup of tea, then there are standalone mods that add many of Grimm's features whilst giving you a more vanilla Fallout experience. I'd suggest relighting the interiors with Interiors Enhanced and Reverb and Ambience Overhaul to make your gunshots echo throughout the wasteland and inside buildings. I'd also get Dynamic Music Overhaul, which does have the purpose of stopping the music from playing for small threats like mole rats, but what it really means for us is that the combat music won't spoil enemies lurking in the dark, i.e. you're going to get jump scared a lot more. Darker Nights is key as well because let's be honest, nothing is hiding in the vanilla game's nighttime. Don't be afraid and select the darkest option. And don't worry because we'll bring a flashlight to help you out a bit with the mod Pip-Boy Flashlight. No matter if you choose to install these few mods or the complete overhaul route, the next mod is sickening no matter what's installed. A Cannibal in Concord is, as far as I could see, the most twisted and f***ed up mod Fallout modders have graced us with. It's gory, graphic, and definitely not safe to show uncensored here on YouTube. So let's give you the kids friendly breakdown of this mod. This mod adds a lovely new house to your game for all your friends in the Commonwealth to explore, filled with lore and goodies to help with your adventures. So that was a f***ing lie. Okay, it's actually got dead bodies everywhere and strings you along a story that is based off the real life serial killer and cannibal, Albert Fish. A lot of lore this mod features also has direct quotes from him. The author promises he isn't a sick freak, but I'm not so sure about that one. Besides the shock factor, unfortunately this mod isn't as feature rich and unique as the others I've shown so far, but it doesn't mean it's any worse. The atmosphere and decorations are on point, and the way the game guides you through the house, looking for clues and keys to progress further, was a blast. There's also a great twist at the end that grounds it in the lore of Fallout quite nicely.
if you enjoy these shorter quest mods, then the Kelly Manor Horror is one of the best ones around. It also doesn't overstay its welcome, which is in my opinion perfect for mods like these. The experience will have you wanting more, rather than wondering when it's going to end. The way the mod starts was extremely unique. It constantly showcased what an experienced modder can do by pushing the limits of what it means to be a quest mod. I would suggest you play this mod without using the Pip-Boy flashlight much at all, as the manor is lit perfectly, making the flashlight sort of ruin that atmosphere buildup. It's been made with no mods in mind too, meaning you can easily play this one completely vanilla. As soon as you step into the manor, you'll bump into one of its many story characters as a ghost, after which you'll have to pay close attention to details to solve puzzles in order to continue. Always be aware of your surroundings as well, because there is something stalking your every move. The mod isn't only set in a manor either, as you'll be taken to a swamp-like location and forced to fight or run away. If after completing this one you enjoyed it, the author made a sequel called Kelly Macabre. This one comes with a special made weapon that you will acquire at the end of the questline. As soon as you load in with the mod installed, Madison from the previous mod will show up and demand that you come with her. She explains that she won't be giving you the weapon until you have truly earned it. You'll have to go on a sort of treasure hunt to complete this one, with puzzles that are a lot harder to solve. So if you enjoy games that don't hold your hand and demand that you figure things out yourself, then you're going to like this one. The voice acting is still as great as it was in the first one, although I would say this one leans more into humour than it does horror, as a lot of Madison's lines come off as snarky. I just want to set the world on fire. Wait, those are the once reaching the final room, Madison will force you to cut off the hands of a raider in order to provide bones for the weapon, and the animations, effects and voice acting were especially well done at this part. The weapon is also really far from generic. The look of the gun is based off the Org A3, with obvious changes to add a more spooky element to the gun. The custom animations has the bones on the weapon open to reload the weapon, which I thought was a cool detail despite the animation looking a bit janky. The mod overall is just more of the previous one, with extra flair of it having this weapon that you will ultimately use through the rest of your playthrough. I think I still prefer the original over this one, due to the slight tonal shift mentioned to add more humour, but because both are very short, I think trying either is well worth it. If you enjoyed these Fallout mods, then get subscribed for amazing Fallout and Starfield content, and whilst you do that, check out this video for a vanilla plus mod list for Starfield.